so I started playing around with stuff. I am, let me start here. I am a self-taught photographer, so I have these crazy holes in my knowledge. Um, so I kind of do what I do and watch some videos and some YouTube things and um, do what I can do. Um, so um, I love macro and why um, macro, um, because of the surprise details, I was taking pictures of lilies when this little uh, Katie did nymph crawled out of the middle of one and he was really cool. Um, so, and a lot of times you don't even see it in, in, until you've downloaded it. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's fun. Um, macro, the, the true definition of macro is that it's actual size. It's one to one scale. Um, Micro is probably smaller than that. Um, a lot of what I do is probably not true macro. It's probably close up as much as it is macro. Um, but sometimes you get a really fun perspective. Um, this is a, I didn't bring this with me, I should have. It's a round crystal ball and it reflects refractions. So if you hold it up and there's a building back here, oh what you see over here is the same building upside down. And I was messing around, um, and the duck <laughs> kind of cracked me up. Um, this winter when I was messing around and had time on my hands, I discovered that I really liked the abstract stuff. Um, and a lot of it is reflection and refraction, or at least a, a lot of what I do. Um, but those are my inspirations. So. Here's my workspace, and this is a video, I hope, at least it started out to be, um, on this side. So um, last December, um, I took what used to be my 27-year-old son's bedroom and took it back, <laughs> and it's now my studio slash spare bedroom. He still is allowed to sleep in there when he comes to visit, um, but that's, that's my my workspace when I'm not shooting outside. There it is. That's beautiful. Okay, so here's a little here's a little tour around the room. Here's my closet full of stuff. Oh, in clothes. But <laughs> um, all my photography stuff I got in one space when I redid this room, which was kind of cool because it was all over the place. This is the coolest thing I own in this room, and it's a stand-up desk, but it also electronically goes up and down. So if I'm shooting straight on, I'm not bent over like this for hours on end. And I used to shoot at my kitchen counter because I have under cabinet lights and it was the best light in the house. Um, but I was really tired. My back was really tired when I was done with that. So I splurged and brought this desk and it goes, you see the window behind it? It goes up to about this high. It also goes all the way down here, um, which has been a lifesaver. This mess here is glass panels that I bought at the craft store um, that I use for backgrounds, just for, co for color and backgrounds. Sometimes for um, reflections, some there's a couple of theirs I've put things behind. Um, I did not bring them. <laughs> And this is just showing you that it really is a bedroom as well. <laughs> and, but the whole room is, is set up. So see these stupid vase of flowers? I use those flowers for, for background and for, I use them. That's that. So I have a camera, I have two Canon. Um, I'll probably never shoot anything else because that would mean I'd have to learn something and I don't need another learning curve. Tripod, absolutely necessary for some things. I hate to use it. I'm not a tripod user. I would much rather have the flexibility of moving angles and stuff, um, which is a no-no in a lot of places. Um, this is a light box. And what's there in that picture, what you saw in that picture is bigger and it has lights actually built in it. 
that I can make brighter or darker. I can put them in the back, I can put them in the top, um, but I wouldn't haul them that either. Um, I have additional lights, even though I have those lights, I have additional lights because when you do refraction work, the background needs to be really well lit. And then sometimes you want a little extra light on the front of things. So I have these little, stupid little $15 LED lights right here mm -hmm. that I use. I, one day I'm gonna find the perfect little stupid $15 LED light, this is not it, because um, the space is so wide, it's hard to set, but it works. I mean, I've used flashlights, so, you know. Um, outside, light diffusers. So if the sun is really harsh, you get it so that it's a softer light coming on whatever you're shooting outside. And there's also these crazy things that I have never used that also bounce light. More light. Oh, where is it? On the inside, it's gold. Golden light. Black. Um, I've never used them, truth be told. Um, and background material, I, the glass, um, craft store, love the craft store, and I just got a bunch of different stuff. And some of it has worked really well, and some of it, you'll see it, and some of it has not. And I just put it on cardboard and did it front and back, so if I wanted to do checkerboard, like this with something on it so it showed all the way around it, I could. Not a lot of money invested here. This is my latest failed experiment. <laughs> um, again, cardboard, spray painted so I could make some different background colors. But for what I was using it for, I needed to focus deep into my picture. And so it picked up all the little lines in the car. <laughs> so I'm on the hunt for plexiglass now. So this was cheap, that is not. How about poster board? Poster board is good. It's, it's not quite um, sturdy enough. Foam core. Foam core is probably the right answer. So, we want to go down. Uh, just for reference, I've never done this until yesterday. <laughs> Inspiration. So I started with a photography club here at the lake and that Facebook page um, as far as infra inspiration. And then one of the um, girls, Patty, at the photography club said, I'm on Flickr. I do Macro Mondays. So I got on Flickr and I started doing Macro Mondays. So every Monday they have a different theme and you shoot to that theme and post it on Monday. They post it, I don't know. It's like previous Wednesday and you have to have it posted by Monday at somewhere around six o'clock because I'm usually right around six o'clock and I've missed it once or twice. Um, and then in some other Facebook group, I'm on a few different Facebook groups I follow the photographers on and somebody mentioned this 52 frames deal where and the idea of that group is that they have one week it was macro, one week it was black and white. They have a different something you're supposed to shoot to every week. And their whole theory is you post, whether it's your best picture ever or not, you get something so you're shooting every week, which actually really helps. Details. So I said one of the things I loved about macro was the details. So. I'm just going to hit some things here. That's a begonia. That's a begonia flower. Uh, that's a lily from, um, you know, the, the house on the lake with the lily point? Yeah. That's out of their yard. And that was early morning because I was trying to hit that beautiful early morning light. And <laughs> what I didn't realize 
So I'm creeping into their backyard at like 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. And they, they, said, they keep saying, anytime, Karen, anytime. So I'm, I'm tiptoeing. They do have an electric fence, by the way, out in front of, so the deer can't get to the lilies. So I'm stepping on the rocks around the edge, trying to get around the fence. And I get out there and I start shooting. Half the lilies don't open <laughs> until the sun comes up. <laughs> yeah. That was um, from a photography club during COVID. Jen came up with the idea of doing a, a scavenger hunt. So we had a list of different types of things, and this was old new. And that's still one of my one of my favorites. Um, in the woods. Pretty little flower. Uh, a lily from another place. <laughs> I have an admirer too, but I never pick, take a picture of my own. That was a fun find. Um, that was in the on the trail over near Germana, back by the river. When the bluebells were, I couldn't get a good picture of bluebells to save my life, but got a really cool picture of Phil Hutch Burns. Um, so dandelion. Dandelion. Yeah. Um, all of those pictures I just showed you were taken outside. Um, and I just took that thing down to the dock, and it was a bright sunny day, and that's the lake water in the background. It just happened to be picking up that blue. So in the studio, my spare bedroom, that's a camellia flower off my bush. Um, they're really touchy and they're very, really perfect. And I found the perfect one and it was windy outside. And windy and macro do not go together. So I snipped it because it was my bush and I couldn't and brought it in. <clears throat> Store-bought lily. Middle of winter. Karen? Yeah. Can I say something on mm -hmm. lilies? Mm -hmm. If you cut them to keep them in your house, remove the brown spot. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And they will last a lot longer than if you leave it on. Yeah. They also stand. I, I'm a floral designer, so I know about those things. <laughs> I know nothing about the flowers. Okay, but if you take that off, they'll last longer. Yeah, that's good to know. So when I was at the Lily Point taking pictures in the wee hours of the morning, I came home, I got in my car, and I looked, and it looked like it had been bleeding. Yeah. I was like, and I looked down, and all down this leg, and across my shorts. I was like, what the, I'm like, what did I cut? And it was, they have this really deep maroon lily, and I must have rushed up against that flower. I had no idea. It's the oddest thing. Um, again, in the studio, this was a uh, uh, Macro Monday's thing about shadows. Again, in my studio, I just poured some water on whatever those might have been in a dish. I can't remember. I bought a bleeding heart this year because I love them so much and I've never had one in the yard, but I did snip this off and bring it inside <laughs> so I could get a really black background on it. You know. Sometimes you get that black background when you're outside anyways, if it's in the shadows, but I wasn't. Also, it's really low. <laughs> and my desk comes up like this really nicely. All right, set up. So, camera tripod, um, similar to this, um, flower, I have this little clippy thing, and it's got a little bendable arm with a clip on the end of it um, that I use to hold things, um, and it's very magnetic. <laughs> I just... So there's in the studio. Those two, I believe, are out of order. Um, again, dandelions um, inside. And I took these goofy little $15 lights 
and they have a blue and a yellow insert and I put blue and on one and yellow in the other and ended up with that. All right. Critters. I'm not real big on critters, um, but I do have some favorites. So Maymont, that was at Maymont. <laughs> this was at a, what was that called, Jenna? Photography shoot where they brought these animals in. Oh, and like, nature visions. Nature visions. Um, and they brought the animals in and let you shoot them. Isn't he cute? And this little guy next to his leaf is, we have a pond in the backyard. And you know those toads that go, eh, and it's all silver long? So that's what they produce. And they lay their eggs in my pond every year. And then one or two weeks in July, I'll have these toads that are like this big all over the yard. And I put him next to that leaf to try to show how little he was. But I still take him to my family every time I find him. They're like, yeah, we've seen him. <laughs> uh, frozen bubbles. All again, all about the detail. Um, so it's got to be really cold to pull this off. People up north have a better shot at doing this. As best I can tell, the temperature needs to be somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees to get this to happen. When it happens, it's really cool. You actually can watch the crystals grow on the bubble. Um, this is a solution of Dawn dish washing detergent and water and corn syrup um, just to get some more stability, uh, which I found online. And now you got more bubbles. Oh, it's beautiful. All on my back screened in porch um, early morning because then it's still cold enough mm -hmm. and I face east so I have good light coming in there that one was one of rare ones that got all the way frozen before it burst mm -hmm. they All right, so you can make everyday items look really cool when you get in up close. Okay. This was um, Macro Mondays, and it was just called Matchstick. And I was trying to get both the burst of the flame and the smoke. I took almost a thousand pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really like that one. Um, this was another probably Macro Monday thing. Um, just everyday food that's a lemon, a lime, and an orange. I didn't know limes had those little polka dots on them. Right? Yeah. And again, another Macro Monday. Um, this book looked way cooler up close, and it looks <laughs> just laying there? You can tell what it smells like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, different perspective. Okay, here's oil and water. Um, this is one of the first things I tried. Um, so it's refraction. I did this in my kitchen. Um, I had a bowl and I had a piece of striped cloth underneath it to try to pick up the re reflection from the bubbles. Um, this I put dye in the water. And I think I might've put some milk in the water as well. Um, and this is my favorite one because it looks like a universe. <laughs> and that was literally done on my stove. I have a blue backsplash. And it was in a cell, it was in a, pan. Um, then it picked up the blue from the backsplash. So reflections. Now this is not everybody's cup of tea, um, but I kind of like it. This is a piece of red glass with a daffodil in front of it and I shot the glass 
the, the reflection, that's the reflection of the glass. That's another uh, really weird one. Um, the subject was fork. So there's a fork. And you can't tell, but this fork is curved like this. And I had yellow piece of glass and this reflecting off it. More reflections, water, flower. Black plexiglass, beautiful reflection thing, but boy does it scratch easily and show every piece of lint you have in your house. <laughs> All right, here's refractions. So this is one seed off a of dandelion. It's in my little clampy thing. And I had yellow and blue, apparently, glass behind it for the refraction. Um, you can use a spray bottle and spray, spray, spray. But when you only have one, you have to use a hypodermic needle. Which is kind of interesting. You can't buy one at the drugstore, but you can buy a pack of 20 on Amazon. <laughs> um, that, so in refraction, the background needs to be really well lit. That is a fake flower. And if you photograph the fake flower up front, you can tell it's a fake flower. But in reflect, refractions, it works. Um, and I'm pretty sure I did those droplets by sp using the spray bottle and just spraying until I got some. I also think I cheated a little bit by the roundness of these by putting a little, by using glycerin instead of water. Glycerin will hold up better. It'll hold on longer, but it's not as round. Mm -hmm. It'll get that long like that. Wait, I'm ahead of you. Um, <laughs> One more refraction, you guys have seen that one. That was, um, the background of that was my iPad with a big blown up picture of a daisy on it with the brightness all the way up. That works really good except when you're spraying. Um, um, that was this, lots and lots of sprays. Uh, also a fake flower. All right, here comes silliness. <laughs> the subject was game pieces. This subject was music or something, notes maybe. That took forever and a flipping day. <laughs> okay, abstract, here we go. Here's abstract glass. This is a glass platter that's in my cabinet, um, up close and personal. This is a glass panel that I have that's uh, see-through but kind of ridged, and I put a green plant behind it. More glass panel, platter. And more glass platter. That's the first one I did. <laughs> and you can't, you look at it, even when you look at it, you don't see that squiggly stuff going on. All right, here's abstract. Here's the other pictures that I kept out of the thousand. Oh, here's a setup on that. A box of matches. I had book matches. I had box matches. Book matches make a much better smoke. Can't explain why. I probably should have paid attention in math and science better than I did in school, and I would know these things. Um, and there's another smoke picture. All right. Um, the other way to make something um, a little abstract is with intentional movement. And when you 
focus on the item and quickly move it just a little bit and not as quick as you think you need to and with, with the settings right on the camera you get some blur but you still have some sense of what it is uh, fake flower from my bedroom upstairs fake fern from my bedroom upstairs <laughs> That purple flower that you saw lying in water reflected earlier. Um, when this is done really well, it's really amazing. Um, and it's really hard. And I don't even know what this was, but I thought it was kind of cool. I know what this was. Any ideas? So those are. Um, um, the little beads that keep your bathroom smelling nice. Oh, <laughs> All right, these are abstracts that I did on purpose, that I didn't just happen on some other way. Mm -hmm. That you saw this, mm -hmm. and that's a, a little round, shiny pewter cup that's like that, just sitting on there. Okay, want to guess? It's bubble wrap. It's a piece of bubble, popped bubble wrap. <laughs> um, this was an exercise in frozen things you freeze and this was a car red carnation oh. um, in the ice this is a white flower in the ice of some sort um, I thought that was fun oh, a little pun intended demonstration so I just wanted to show you um, I decided I needed to try this because I've been seeing all these refractions where you get a picture of something and uh, the background is one color and half the glass is that color and the other half is this color um, in varying degrees. Um, also, way harder than you think. Um, the, the, it's, you have to, the panels in the back have to be exactly even. Um, or else that ridge shows. Um, you need to get your focus deep, um, which means whatever's behind there needs to be clean. Um, I challenge anyone in this room to fill up wine glasses, not get any splashes on the edge, or if you do, get them off without getting fingerprints on the stem, <laughs> because I guarantee you it all shows. Um, but that was pretty much, I think my lights were all on the, on the back on that. Um, and here's what we ended up, oh, here's what not to do. Okay, if you buy a really cheap bottle, uh, because the glass is distorted, the line's distorted. <laughs> it's like, huh. Oh, and by the way, so I'm a little eclectic, and I don't have any glasses that look like this, and so I used all my oddly shaped square bottom glasses, they don't work. <laughs> I, so I was at the store buying really round glasses to make it work. There's oh. that. And see, I still don't have the lighting right. It's just a little dark down here, and a little dark up at the top. It's brighter in through here. Um, so I have some work to do on that. I see the dark on the top, but you see the rim of the glass. See, it's not there now, and the rim of the glass disappeared. Uh, there you go. At least all the way back here. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't fond of the yellow color either, so I turned it into green, post-processing. And here's what it looked like when I was working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, demo is really hard to demo when you're in this close. So that's what you got. And that's what you got. Uh -huh.